Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of these stranger things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everyone at home watching us live. How's it going? Um, Middle of the week. Let's get caught up with what's been going mm -hmm. on, because ooh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week, uh, yes, especially we uh, the birthday of Linux and all those wacky tech tips. Man, I can't wait to talk about that. Um, <laughs> yes, the Canadian mm -hmm. one. I do, <laughs> man. I'm not going to lie. I posted it last <laughs> night on Twitter, and for a minute there, I was like, man, Linux is 29 years old, and one day... Thanks for all the tech tips, but sometimes Twitter doesn't get uh, subtle humor. <laughs> no. <and> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it does not. So I decided not to do it. Uh, so check this out. Uh, I was attacked by my Alexa. Oh. All, all right. right. Yeah. Okay. Do yeah. tell. <laughs> yes. You ever have Did that it finally happen? become self aware? <laughs> I have a battle scar. No, it died. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's a that's unusual. <laughs> I just went to uh, cut it on. It didn't do anything. I'm like, hmm, hmm. This is one Amazon gave me for a project I did for them. So I had no love for this thing. I don't use it as an Alexa. I'm like, hello, USB speaker, and I carry it around. I'm like, Oop. so mm -hmm. I immediately just went to. I have Sonos and all in the salesman. I was like, I'm gonna see what's inside you. Then <laughs> we just start digging, and I finally popped the. Uh, base off and it like snapped back and chomped like right above my cuticle that felt wonderful yes mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> you were damaged <laughs> so i just went ahead and took it apart and got the board out and it's like is there any solder bridges or something you know it's got the 18650 battery and i'm like no no just put it back together and while putting it back together i just Took a little screwdriver and pushed it down in there to cut it, bridge it to cut it back on. It went. Dear. That was the post earlier this week on Twitter where I was like, I'm not a big fan of the disassemble something, just put it back together and it starts working. But you know what? You know what? It Sometimes works. it works. You just nod your head, <laughs> you walk away slowly, and you just roll with it. So that was my story. What's new with you, Pedro? Uh, over here, I am currently looking at uh, improving the thermals inside the Steam box. Not that it's currently running particularly hot. It's just the um, teeny tiny little fans on the 1650. Thank you, by the way, Arthur. Um, it, they get a bit loud, especially if the weather is a bit warm. <laughs> so, I yeah, I'm just looking at ways to improve it and... The best way that I found thus far is to put a fan behind it, pulling air away from the GPU to help the teeny tiny little fans and hopefully bring the noise down a little bit. Get one of those uh, 92 mil thin Noctua fans that 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 should do it. And a fan right. grill. You just <laughs> take the side of the Very case nice. off like a normal person. <laughs> but that's the whole point. It's to have a computer inside the Xbox 360. Yeah. Case. <laughs> What's new with you, Jill? Aw. Well, I actually, I just want to congratulate Chris Fisher from Jupiter Broadcasting. Um, Jupiter Broadcasting is going independent. Yay. So they're no longer, you know, under the umbrella of a cloud guru, but they are, they do have them as a sponsor. And as a result right. of them going independent again um he's bringing the linux action news back coder radio and some of our favorite former hosts back so that's just wonderful and i'm so excited about this we've all missed these shows <laughs> so it's nice to have them back <laughs> good for them man uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah hope everything yeah. spins back up that's uh, it's not exactly. fun working for someone else which mm -hmm. yeah 100 mm -hmm. hey Somebody who has worked for a lot of different people, but has, you know, he's got this little side project that's always remained independent is Linus Torvalds. Yes. Yes. So Linus, as we were talking about earlier, Linux turns 29 years old. Oh my goodness. Now I feel really, really old. And, uh, you know, Deb, we talked about Debian last week turned 27, but now it's Linux's turn at 29. And, uh, what what's really cool is this is when a young a very young Linus Torvalds 
um, stated on comp.os.minix news group site, he stated, I'm doing a free open system. Just a hobby won't be big and professional like GNU. <laughs> and those, those words went down in history as, uh, you know, being a changing the whole indus industry. And it's just, it's just so cool. Linux is in everything, as you know. It's in, it's in our Internet of Things. It's on the servers. It's in our supercomputers. It's in space. It's on all the things. <laughs> you can say it. It is the wor world's most widely used operating system, except it on the is, desktop. Definitely. <laughs> Not on yeah, the desktop. Definitely on the desktop. <laughs> Not on the desktop. Mean, <laughs> Linux is. Uh, <laughs> how long has it been? When did you get started with Linux, Pedro? Uh, 2004, when I went to university. That yeah. was, uh, no, it was actually 2005. It was Ubuntu 504. They had the CDs in university. And, uh, yeah, that was the first distribution that I tried. I eventually ended up installing Fedora 4, I think it was, on the laptop because that worked much better. And actually, uh, the, uh, Wi-Fi card actually worked in Fedora. So... Yeah, no, I only started in the mid naughty, so. Huh. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was 1993, the, the year that uh, Debian came to life. And I actually started with Slackware and then um, with uh, Debian and then Red Hat. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I barely remember. I started with Slack, went over to Red Hat, and just uh, stayed on Fedora for the longest time. Played, I've played around with pretty much everything. But, um, and that's just wild. It's been around. I mean, it's coming up on 30. It can definitely get a discount on its uh, car rental. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's just a pretty cool thing. So, I see coming up next, uh, we have one of the favorite, my favorite, personal favorite things <laughs> going on um, <laughs> in Linux. Uh, and I say this as I just picked up a uh, Mark of the Unicorn audio interface and they learned the fun way by not working with anyone from the Fado project. Like, hey, we'd like to be able to, you know, have this working under Linux. Go, nah, -uh, Linux is bad. No way. They thoroughly had their entire product line reverse engineered just brilliantly. I mean, better than anyone else. Because when you tell somebody no, well, their first reaction is like, all right, I'll be back. Spite, it's a damn good motivator. <laughs> but yeah, um, Linux drivers are always a bit of a point of contention because, yeah, a lot of uh, hardware manufacturers don't want to deal with Linux for one reason or another. And one of those manufacturers is Corsair. As um, anyone who's tried to use one of their peripherals will know. Well, uh, Harry Gill, Jill, there, uh, <laughs> here, uh, decided to uh, get one of the H150i RGB Pro all in one um, closed liquid uh, coolers from Corsair. And of course, uh, the cooler itself does its job, but you can't control uh, any of the RGBs, you can't see what the uh, pump uh, speed is, you can't see what the uh, liquid temperature and everything else that the thing can actually report. You can't see any of that on Linux. So he decided, you know what? Let's figure this out. And he did. Uh, eventually, uh, he reached the exact same conclusion that... i um, scrolling down like, there's Wireshark. There it is. All right. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how they all uh, end up because it's like, oh, what's that? Wireshark can capture USB packets? Well, in that case, uh, let's use Wireshark, and that's what he did. And then he used a little bit of a uh, clever rust to uh, basically find all the all the bits that were changing with uh, like each time the uh, the cooler reported something, all the bit uh, all the bits that changed, and he worked out the uh, little maths equations to make those numbers make sense. And all of a sudden, we have pump, we have um, liquid temperature we have just about everything else so yeah that that works <laughs> that works uh, very well actually <laughs> that uh, i really think that's just a perfect yeah. example well, that's sort of, i don't want to say a warning but just let it be known um 
your stuff, uh, it's not hacked, but it's going to get reverse engineered if somebody, somebody wanted to watch DVDs on their Linux box one time. You know that story? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, yeah. If, if somebody contacts you and they're like, yo, I, I'd like to build a, something, help them out. Because that's PlayStation. How'd that work for them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, it worked very well for Rocat because they didn't want to do Linux drivers. But when uh, when Stefana Schatz went to them, it's like, yo, I can make you Linux drivers. And they said, oh, you can. Here you go. Here's all the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, cool. <laughs> right. oh, very good. And so many fans have reverse engineered lots of Corsair projects over the years, including their RGB keyboards. That was one of the first... Their RGB keyboards were some of the first to get Linux support <laughs> because of the community. Really cool. <laughs> oh, man. I'll just stick with keyboards that require USB support and I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> I mean, you'd be hard to find one that doesn't at That's... this point in time. Yeah. Hey, look, somebody got my point. It's Pedro. <laughs> I'll send you the prize. Um, okay. <laughs> we do have some good news. Uh, Blender has a new sponsor. Y yes, Blender, uh, Unity uh, Technologies has joined the Blender Development Fund as a patron member. Yay! You know, I knew this would happen soon. Because uh, so, so many uh, people use Blender, use Blender files for the Unity uh, game engine and, and import them in. And they have been actually for like 10 years. And um, it's something that I show my students um, how to do, how to optimize their Blender files for the Unity game engine. And, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's perfect. And it's used so heavily by game developers. This makes sense. So I, I was waiting for this. I, I knew this would happen soon. And what was really yeah. cool is, uh, go ahead, Pedro. No, 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 no. go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I was just looking at the uh, total amount that they're currently getting from all of the, uh, the patrons that they have. Mm. They are now getting over a thousand euro, uh, a hundred thousand euros a month, which is kind of amazing Yeah. for a team yeah. of 20 people. Yeah. Yes. That pays a lot of paychecks. <laughs> pays paychecks and allows them to hire more people to work on, on yep. Blender. And uh, yeah, so this was announced at the uh, Virtual Computer Animation Conference Seagraph that is being held actually right now. It has been um, going on for the last two weeks, and they always usually make major announcements during the convention. It's good to see. That's always good news, mm -hmm. and especially being able to finance a project like Blender and just watching how much it's grown, like especially in like the last two years. Yes. That, yeah. That's been really <laughs> cool. Is. That's really cool. Um, Nine to Five Linux has a little thing about. It, it seems like every other week, System Seventy Six is like, you know what? Here's a new thing. Go play with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this one is. Uh, it's another chonky laptop, perhaps the chonkiest of them all. It's the Bonobo WS. Uh, they already had a Bonobo in the past, but this one. Well, this one comes with. Uh, Wait a minute. Up Wait to a hundred. Um, <laughs> should I expect? Um, here we go. We take this bet. I haven't looked at the page yet. Will there be poorly photoshopped images on the screens? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. That's like the top <laughs> picture immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we got a tablet uh, we can step. Nice. Yep. All right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's one of the big ones. It's the 17.3 inch and it comes with the 10th generation core uh, i5, i7, or i9 up to 128 gigs of RAM, up to 26 terabytes of uh, NVMe storage and up to a GTX, uh, sorry, an RTX 2080. Uh, 2080 Super, my bad. Uh, and it's, I, I was looking at that, it's like, oh, it's the Y laptop, unless... Unless the price ends up being better than the uh, comparable version of their previous laptop, the Serval WS. So off I go to the System76 website. I spec out a um, Bonobo WS and a Serval WS. The Bonobo has the i9 10 core 20 thread um, CPU with the 2070 and uh, two terabytes of NVMe and uh, 64 gigs of RAM. 
And then I do basically the same thing for the Serval with the 3900X, uh, sorry, the 3900 Pro, which is a 12 core, 24 thread uh, CPU, which, well, we've all seen the benchmarks and we all know how those two processors go with one another. Uh, the uh, AMD system is in and around $3,000. The Intel system is in and around $4,000 for something that performs... <laughs> worse mm. here's the thing <laughs> this this laptop is made for people who like the profile shot to look like a sword out of final fantasy and it's kind of important to some people man all right you mean, you mean like this one <laughs> see jill might be holding up something let's see how long she can hold it up because it drastically increases the chance of you dropping it <laughs> <laughs> this is my Asus Republic of Gamers, and boy, the form factor for the Bonobo looks very, very sim similar. Um, yep. But what is, yep. <laughs> what is cool about the, the latest Bonobo is it's 8.38 um, pounds, um, which is actually a lot lighter than previous models, which, you know, hit about 10 or, or higher. Like this beast I have in my hand is about 10, so I can't hold it up for too long. And it's got a full-size <laughs> Ethernet port, HDMI. And, I mean... <laughs> It, yeah, you, no, the one advantage <laughs> that it does have over the Intel version is, um, well, uh, over the AMD version, I should say, because this is the Intel version. Uh, this is a 17.3. Mm -hmm. The exactly. Serval uh, caps out <laughs> at 15.6. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's, I like the 17.3 inch laptops because they're easier to see. Would you pay a thousand pounds more for the extra two inches of the screen? Probably not. I think you're yeah. right, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I think like you, many people would not. <laughs> yeah. Pedro's but... solution is, you know what, get the 15, sit a little closer. Yeah. But yeah. I, I am looking for the AMD thread booper option, and I'm sure that is that is coming, like they have with their other laptops. So In a laptop <laughs> now. <laughs> that would require AMD to make a mobile variant of Threadripper. And yeah. That's not going to happen. But it might. You never know. It might. <laughs> yeah, no, Tuxedo and um, System76 ha both have laptops with uh, the actual desktop Ryzen CPUs. But those are the Ryzens. The, those are very efficient for what they do. Those are very, very good. The Threadripper is a monster. <laughs> like yeah, the, it is. Like the package size yeah. alone. That's a chunky boy. <laughs> yes, Pedro, tell me more. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ven has knows. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're even bigger than my old uh, Intel Pentium Pro uh, processors. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that I mean, blows most of it's, uh, of the it's definitely taken up by, because they're just glued together. You know, you got to wipe them off sometimes because <laughs> the glue leaks out. And... <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay because they just wreck everything else. Uh, it's kind of brilliant. I ran across this, and as I, <laughs> I think I told Pedro on Saturday in the pre pre super shows, and I was like, so I decided not to get in an argument on the internet. I'm, aren't you proud of me? <laughs> 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 Again, that's uh -oh. you. I, I expect that from you. For me, eh. <laughs> <laughs> but I really. For me, getting an argument is not to walk in and be like, this is raw, raw, raw. It's like, uh, you really got to be telling somebody to do something that could potentially damage something. But what are we talking about? A great post on Fedora Magazine about configuring Fedora for um, practicing, you know, jamming out, composing music, and all that. This is from Jan Colette, and uh, it's a, fair enough, you know, just walking through the introductions, configurations, stuff that you would need, the basic applications to jam out, to rock out, maybe do, you know, LMS, you can do notation, all that fun stuff. You can make your beeps, you can make your boobs. I had no problem with it. And until I got to right here. Until I got to right here. <laughs> right about here. Might even, yeah, that highlighted part. A little problem with no. that. <laughs> it says a real-time kernel is necessary for audio recording on your PC, especially when you're doing multi-track recording. <laughs> uh, Here comes Ben. <laughs> something, something. Um, evidence? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we are evidence right now. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I could stop right there and you should just be able to take my word from it. Um, here's the thing, man. Like I said, it's going to be something that could potentially damage your system. And when I say damage, uh, damage your user experience and damage other people's lives. Like, what just happened? Uh, look at this. I mean, because it's nonsense like this that will stop people from wanting to mess around and record on Linux. You most certainly do not need a hard real-time kernel for multi-track recording. This box right here. And now, granted, this is a custom compiled low-latency kernel running on Debian. Same difference. Two, four, six, eight, ten tracks right now being slung. Not a problem whatsoever. On top of running OBS and coding video, like six browsers and all this other fun stuff. Now, a hard RT kernel, like uh, one that'd be shipped with Debian, or if you get it from the uh, CMR, yeah, CCM, CCRMA repo from Fedora, or yeah, if you grab that, there's some things you're going to run into, some small issues, man. Um, like your NVIDIA drivers, your AMD GPU drivers, your GPU Pro drivers, your Blackmagic drivers, your network drivers, maybe from Mellanox. Or None of that's going to work when you reboot your box. So uh, mm. you might, this is what I wrote in, hear me out on that. I wrote in the comments, I'm like, maybe put like a note there, be like, um, <laughs> yeah. It would have been a better note to leave that than that broad sweeping statement. You need real time. I worry that somebody who is just looking, you're like, hey, man, I have Linux. I bought a YouTuber special. I just want to plug it in. Do, oh, I have to install the real time. Code. They don't know what that basically anything DKMS or a binary kernel model is not going to compile against that. It's just not. Um, that worried me a little bit. But... Uh, what do I want to say about this? If you can, like the two boxes, well, the three boxes to my right down here and another box that you can't see down there. I'm just pointing at stuff. They all run hard RT kernels because they can, you know, they're Intel, Intel networking and display. It's not a problem, but like on the thread wrapper, I can't get away with that. If you can run hard RT and you know the limitations, go for it. That shouldn't be step one. A low latency kernel is more than capable of probably handling anything that you at home are going to be throwing at it. It's not going to be a problem. Now, another thing they brought up, what they didn't bring up, PSA. I get this question a lot. A, I want to mess with my MIDI stuff. I'm going to plug in my um, pads, uh, beat boot pads. I know they got a better name than that. I call them beat boot pads, like drum machine pads or keyboards, instruments, and stuff like that synthesizers beat boot pads come on we're using professional <laughs> terminology you scrub <laughs> i don't want you sounding like an amateur on our shows pedro beat boot pads um now what you need to make sure you're doing um this will be in the show notes you need to make sure that your timer uh your kernel is compiled with a thousand hertz timer frequency hmm you're like, oh, I've been dropping notes. I've been losing connections. That's why, like, Debian out of the box is compiled like 400 megahertz or something dumb like that. That's why I went back and redid all the kernels. But um, keep a lookout for that. Uh, here's, like, the odd thing. Listen, Canonical, Ubuntu, I'm giving you props. If you need a low-latency kernel with a 1K timer, Ubuntu. It's in the repos. Download low latency kernel. Ubuntu Studio. Go figure. There's probably yes. a reason people are like, hey, <laughs> if I'm going to build a audio, like, a, let, let's start with an Ubuntu base because they already do that. Uh, what's the right? Yes, that's the word I was looking for on that. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of mentions for like different types of recording and stuff like that. This is all fine. I mean, this is well done. I would suggest using, um, if you're starting out, look into some KX Studio. I got to write my counter to this, so I'm just not complaining on the internet. Guitar X is fine. Live recording, if you're going to be doing live recording like we are, I highly suggest Adore for doing that over LMS or anything like that. And you get a bunch of racks, so link to this will be in the show notes go play with it have fun with it the only thing that i saw that it's like oh that you might have problems with is uh telling people to install an 
hard RT kernel. Because there's a better than non-zero chance that it's going to knack or something in their system. So, uh, good work. I mean, getting more people informed about it, uh, it, to be fair, it doesn't necessarily dispel the, do I have to be a, become an audio engineer to do audio under Linux? You don't. But it helps. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> so, uh, what else do we have? What's up next? Mozilla news? Yeah, yeah yes. it, it Mo is. Mozilla this... adjacent. C correct yeah this yeah we're not sure sure what the future of the deep speech speech project um under mozilla will be um with their recent layoffs and restructuring from two weeks ago and uh you know deep speech is the open source speech to text project and uh it's been going on since 2017 and it was actually the first project of the machine learning group at mozilla and it's there's a lot of other projects that have wanted to use this uh, deep speech as a base and to have an open source you know a speech to text project is really important and we're really concerned about the future but they you know they have said that they are going to come out with a uh, 1.0 release soon despite what's going on at Mozilla but it's still very very concerning i'm very concerned about this yeah, and uh, the realist in me kind of wants to say that they're kind of waiting for that 1.0 so that Mozilla can say, oh, look, it's a finished product now. Goodbye. Yeet. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think you might be right. <laughs> I'm worried about that. <laughs> and, so you know, I, I really have... do hope, like, the amount of voice that they have at this point, the amount of training that they got from people, it's like, that would be a bit of a waste if it just dies so one of the yeah. things they say is you know one thing we're asking the community with deep speech uh make it better continue uh contributing uh, making pull requests helping each other out in their discourse and build things that are utilizing deep speech which is awesome i want more work done on things like this less work done on things like vpns yeah so true and a lot of my blind we have plenty of VPNs. community <laughs> Yeah, a, a lot of visual impaired people in the community would benefit from this as well, including myself. So I really want this project to continue. It's, it's made such great strides with it. And it's so nice to have another option to, you know, Google and Amazon. Okay, Google, uh, <laughs> install me a Wayland. <laughs> <laughs> no, even Google can go. help you now. <laughs> Wait. But laugh again, Mick Google. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> this is a work in progress. This is a GLX delay. Accelerated GLX for x Wayland. Here's the fun part. With the NVIDIA driver. Uh, it's able to... It's, it's a hack. Let's just go ahead and clear this out. This is directly off of the GitLab page. Hack. First second. <laughs> yeah. GLX contacts under x Wayland when using NVIDIA. The binary driver, so you're not using UAVO. And uh, running GL rendering through that, translating the GLX commands to either EGL or X protocol as necessary. And it will perform the translation, at, what is it, GLVND at the vendor library, which x Wayland configures in the vendor response. How does it work? Well, science. Don't that way. Yeah, have faith. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it acts as a shim and it sends in between the driver and whatever application happens to be calling for the graphical server. Uh, in not too dissimilar a way of how the AMD GPU drivers uh, currently work, uh, they act as a shim between the proprietary bits and the hardware or the Mesa open source bits and the hardware. It's kind of like that. But uh, yeah, it, that <laughs> that might not be the right way to do it, but that's probably going to be the only way to do it for I, the time. <laughs> I love me a good hack, man. And, you know, I, I get inspired when I read things like, is this a good idea? Question mark in the uh, read me. I'm like, that's my, uh, that's somebody I like right there. I, I know those feels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing this doesn't mean that I can immediately just get something like this set up and completely wipe out X and everything's going to work swimmingly, right? Maybe not. Mm. 
Especially since it just came out? No, probably not. <laughs> well, Pedro, what you need to do is throw away your existing <laughs> video card and buy an AMD card and use the open source drivers. <laughs> I technically do have an RX uh, 570 that is currently sitting in El Cheapo. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, if AMD, uh, if, uh, well, if AMD get their stuff together, you know, like put it all in a bag or a backpack, just so it's together, um, maybe my next GPU will be uh, an AMD one, but right now, yeah, no, that 1080 is still doing very good. Thank you, Martin. So, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe oh, the, nice. like all things Waylon, <laughs> this will be mature and ready for mass consumption in 10 years. Yeah, that that's about the time frame we can expect Waylon to be uh, relevant. No, that's just the time, the next 10 years we get to see. We've already been through the first 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give it about 20-ish, no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that sounds too bad. It's like, don't worry, it's like 10 years from now, we get it. Uh, um... <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Even on the topic of Wayland, uh, there was a uh, pull request submitted for OBS uh, with a direct screen copy. And guys got that worked out. I went to start looking at that and it's using pipe wire and some other stuff. Uh, very low CPU usage because I'm going to need tools like that in my future to continue doing this. Oh, that's a hack. Uh, but it works. Um, <laughs> always, always good to see that. And I, I want to live in a world where a, I'd like to live in a world where NVIDIA just let it go and played ball on this one. <laughs> yeah, no, they're going to die on that hill. Yeah. It's uh, EGL streams are the highway. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least KD bent the knee, right? Yeah, KD <laughs> went, well, uh, these are your patches. So as long as you keep supporting them, we're good. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Right on, right on. Um, hey, uh, if you like what we do, you want to support the show, we do a little quick little plug. We give people shout outs and stuff like that. Um, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we fund everything because, hey, we're always independent. No one wants us. And uh, <laughs> you, we oh, like no, to throw that it makes up. us special. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's helping, Jill. <laughs> it makes us special. It is. It does make us makes us special. A football helmet kind of special? No, Pedro. No. Why do you think all footballers? <laughs> there are very intelligent people who play American football and soccer. I'm tired of this discrimination, man. You got a lot of strokes. My bad. <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> Anyway, we like to throw a couple extra bonus rewards. If you support the show, you get uh, early access to a bunch of shows. We got an extra podcast we do each and every week. Um, we have Uncut. If you need four hours, you're stuck at home, working at home. You need four hours of people talking tech, gaming, and all that other fun stuff, movie reviews. We have that in podcast format. And uh, yeah, a bunch of fun stuff. We even have the food bar that's going to be coming up this Friday. Yay! <laughs> do you like golf? Me either. Yes. Not, not even a little bit. But... I like it when there's crazy, <laughs> psychotic things in the way. So enter golf with friends. <laughs> We're going to be rocking that at 8.30 Eastern. If you want to stop by, say hi, or if you want to participate, hop in Discord, and uh, we'll get you on. I think, how many spots are in golf with friends? Eight? Ten? Well, uh, we it used have... to cap at eight during early access. I yeah. don't know if they increased it afterwards. Know... Neither of them know, so <laughs> that many. Well, yeah, because we haven't tested that since the new version. No, so. we played it last time. <laughs> Well, yeah, but we didn't we didn't test the max, <laughs> so I don't well, know either. That's I was asking what the max is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so I don't either. We'll find out. We'll find out again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's get in to one quick, that possibly delicious cinnamon peach pie. Uh, no, cinnamon peach pie. Okay, that's uh -huh. a pie you can drink. Okay, that instantly changed. It's yes. 6.5%. <laughs> it looks like a medicine bottle next to it. Is that what's going on? Or is that that says cinnamon? cinnamon. cinnamon. No, okay. no, yes. no, no. You said medicine. You meant to say masculine. That's a different thing. Um, <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a group of uh, endeavoring people um, decided, you know what would be a good idea? A group of to... 
endeavoring people sounds like escaped convicts. Oh. I mean, they might be for all I know, but no. They are the, uh, they're being funded by the Worldwide Fund for Nature, and they're called uh, SAFE. And, and they, the project that they set up is Safe Acoustics. And what they did is they basically set up a bunch of uh, Raspberry Pis with a 3G connection uh, and a microphone. Uh, they're solar powered uh, and they're out in the middle of the jungle. And what are they doing? Well, that microphone is just capturing the sounds of the jungle. And yeah, that that that's that's it. <laughs> and admittedly, it's very relaxing. If you want some Zen sounds, I put it the uh, the link uh, in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Go there, click, listen to it. It's got birds, monkeys, and it's all... You can listen to it not live exactly because it's a 3G connection coming out from the middle of the jungle, so there will be delay, obviously. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it it sounds amazing. The microphones that they uh, used were very good. They just had one teeny tiny issue. They either the microphone is a little too close to the 3g module or it's not properly um insulated uh -huh. because i was listening to the streams and i could help i could hear the uh, gsm interference the oh. yeah <laughs> i don't know maybe it, it wasn't all the time but it was there <laughs> maybe when starlink gets rolled out i'll go find a green box sit under it and we can start a show with that that'll confuse some people oh boy mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 that's an awesome project hey if you're working yeah, on an awesome amazing. project and you want to tell us about it scream in our direction you can do that we got a little contact button on our web zone that's the best way to do it i mean you can try try to send us a letter in a bottle but pedro has an irrational fear of bottles with letters in them he would prefer you do it the old-fashioned way put it in a can but, yeah, but, okay, yes. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. If you add alcohol to your letter and put it in a bottle, yes, if the bottle is full, that's fine. <laughs> Not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it is absolutely the best place for you to get in touch with us and make sure uh, LWDW is the show that you pick. When you hit the contact button on LinuxGameCast.com. Otherwise, you may send some inadvertent uh, hate mail to uh, the other foul-mouthed Saturday show. And you don't want that. That's why you're watching or listening, as is the case for 99% of Pedro, what if I'm a grown, mature adult capable of um, handling that? And I'm curious about Linux technology, comedy, and gaming. Where could I tune into that show? I don't think it exists. Oh, wait, Linux Game Cast Weekly. There you go. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the other show that you can find on LinuxGameCast.com. The namesake. There's probably a connection. The We're not exactly sure <laughs> what it is, but we have top men working on it. Um, <laughs> yes. <sighs> top, top men. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting angry <laughs> and dizzy. <laughs> Somebody no, that's just the that. heat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for sure. <laughs> so, a studio is that is that right, Pedro? I'm gonna defer yeah. to your judgment. That, is it... that 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 just means studio, and I I think it's both Spanish and Portuguese that that's correct in. All right, but uh... Uh, wrap it about Katie and Live. Hit me with it. Uh, say, um, just a quick feedback about Kadia and Live. Experimental GPU rendering profiles will be merged for testing in the coming days. Also, comma, hint, comma, you can transcode your footage by simply right-clicking on it and choosing an option from the transcode menu. Mm -hmm. This was in reply to, um... Microsoft Teams, well, right. The, uh. last, <laughs> the uh, last update where we were actually <laughs> showing the 2004... Uh, update release and talking about 2008. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was generally one of the questions I had. It's like, hey man, do, and do we know if we have a transcode feature in there? And no one, yeah, I'm not 100 sure. I wasn't sure. Jill was like, I don't know. And um, I'm glad I actually remembered. I did. I had used it before, but it had been a very, very long time. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and you can uh, also right click if, and uh, studio here is um developer probably yeah <laughs> that's really awesome and you can write i i've used the right the right click video stabilizer a, a lot to stabilize videos that comes in really handy and 
And it's similar to the transcode, actually, but it just does it a little differently. Well, if you need to transcode, that is most definitely a thing in KDN Live. So that's pretty cool. The experimental GPU rendering profiles, um, not what I was talking about because I had a couple of people hit me up. And they're like, yo, you know you can use NVN code. Well, I'm not talking about using NVN code. Right? That's very 2005. I'm talking about taking <laughs> advantage of CUDA, compute, massive parallelization of um, the timeline Acceleration Actual hardware acceleration. Yeah. Yeah. GPU compute. <laughs> so, yeah, we're not talking about the custom um, ASICs and sitting on your NVIDIA card for that. But, hey, that would at least help. That'd be a thing. That's brilliant. But we got to bounce out of here. And speaking of KDM Live, that's what I use each and every week to make the credits. So let's Ooh. take a look at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, yay, Kaden Live. If Love you see you. our name on it, shout. <laughs> I don't care where you are, just shout. <laughs> <laughs> if you make the news, you win. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> yay. Uh, Arthurin. Foxy. Atomic Andrew. Ass. Empty. <laughs> Dementor. And Kai all Linux cast. the other producers. Cactus. Master Dak, Douglas, KTW, Dirty Dean, Linux J Girl, Dura. Stein Eric, Sven Time, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Amish, Das Geek, <laughs> Yay, and PowerShell Geek. on Linux, and Nixon's Pyramid Nixon's on Library.tv. <laughs> Yay. Can't believe 237 episodes. <laughs> Those are all Prime numbers. Yes. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't trust prime numbers unless they're Optimus. <laughs> <laughs>